Hey guys, welcome back to Automatic Garage today. It is, how cold is it today? It's like 30 something. Yeah, okay, it's like 30 something. Anyways, going down in the 20s at night. And uh, so it's cold in the shop now. Uh, only thing insulated so far is the ceiling and the gables that are right around the garage door here. So we're gonna get on insulating that, but in the meantime, we gotta get some heat in here, other than kerosene that's $7.50 a gallon now. So we're doing our own version of a double barrel stove. Let me show you what we got done so far. So we're not gonna do full depth. We're gonna do two thirds depth on the barrel. There's what we cut off right over there. Um, this is a frame that I had left over from something else in the past. We're gonna use this for the frame of our door that we're gonna weld in here because this isn't thick enough to not warp. We'll weld that in and that's what we'll hinge our door off of and all that. So Lee's gonna get busy cutting that. Um, I gotta cut this angle iron off of this scrap stuff that I have here to use for my legs. That's what we're gonna do, the double barrel, uh, weld them to. So uh, we'll get busy on that. And the whole goal here is to use nothing but materials that we had here. I just got these barrels from somebody that was moving from down the street for free. Um, we got the steel for our door laying around. This is angle iron that Gary had laying around that, that he didn't need. Um, we're gonna do a heat exchanger on the top. We're doing an exhaust pipe that we have laying around. So uh, y'all just stick with us. We're gonna put you on time lapse. We'll catch up when we're doing something else uh, cool and explain it to you. Until then, Lee's gonna get busy cutting. camera went dead while we we're videoing but i got the door all welded up here just made my own hinges this is a uh, part of some cutoffs off of that piece i was showing y'all that we made this frame out of here and the door swings pretty nice and we're just gonna make a latch and we're gonna uh i guess we're gonna weld this i don't know whether to weld it from the inside or the outside here. I was thinking I'm just welding this edge, clamping it so it is pulled up tight and welding it there on the inside long as my weld doesn't hang over the, the frame for the door latching. Cause my goal is to not have to use uh, any of the, the fire rope, the gasket stuff if I can keep from it. And then uh, I will end up making a vent in the door based on how much vent it seems like it needs. Uh, Cause I know it's gonna pull air around this door. So, Anyways, done that so far, so now I'm going to get this secured to this. I'm going to figure that out. I'll show y'all when I do it. But anyways, let me get busy, and I'll show y'all the next step when I when I get it done. I got most of the door welded on, ran out of wire. I had to go pick up some more welding wire. I got the hole cut for uh, the chimney portion that goes into the second barrel. So what we're going to do tonight, Lee's going to finish welding the door, weld that chimney portion on. I'm going to go on and cut another piece of this flat uh, thick stock there to go in the bottom of this just as another barrier between uh, hot coals, waste oil burner, whatever we're doing here and the bottom of the stove that you worry about burning out. Um, and it's not going to be real wide because I'm going to do fire brick on top of that piece of steel anyway. So I'll get that cut while Lee's welding this up. We'll put you on time lapse and uh, we'll pick up the next day we do this again. So thanks for hanging on with us.
Well, Lee just got done doing all of our welding tonight. He's gonna be embarrassed, but this is how you learn. So we finished up our door. <clears throat> After we welded our door up, we leveled it up, the door here, and then we leveled up our stack that's gonna go into our second barrel. And uh, Lee welded all that up. Those aren't too bad for first time welding. Like I said, I don't know if we talked about this before, but that's five inch diesel exhaust there. And uh, that's what we're gonna do our whole entire uh, chimney out of coming out stovepipe. Uh, I got plenty of scraps laying around. This is our handle we came up with. It's just an exhaust hanger and a spring I had laying around and another scrap piece of metal right here on the back that's heavy that we welded to it. So you just push in, turn, and then it's tight. The door doesn't, maybe just a little bit at the bottom, which I could tweak the door a little bit, but that's pretty tight. It'll probably ease up with use a little bit. And then took another piece of that plate steel. We just tacked it on all four corners. That'll keep all the hot coals from ever sitting against the barrel when and if we burn wood in this or if we just do the oil, the waste oil burner, which is probably what I'm gonna do. I have so much oil to use, but anyways, that'll protect our barrel to make it last. So the bottom barrel is done. Now we're gonna start on the top barrel. I'm gonna cut it down to length first. And then, like I said, I'm gonna add a metal shelf in the middle to split it up to about this point from the back. So the smoke has to travel up around and then up to the stovepipe out the back. So uh, yeah, I'll cut it in half and we'll catch up with y'all then. All right, so I cut my barrel to length and then I was getting ready to, to cut in where the stovepipe goes into the bottom of it. And I was getting ready to put the plate steel inside of it. And I was thinking, well, then I got to deal with orienting it all right when I weld it on. So then I opted to go on and make my stand for this so that I could go on and, and have the second barrel or the first barrel mounted. I could set the second one in there. I could mark my stack. I could put it in without the lid on it and uh, mark the uh, plate that goes in it. That way I'm not dealing with trying to orient it the right way and figure it all out. So welding the stand up real quick. And what I'm gonna do is roughly, I'm gonna set my door about 18 inches off the floor. That's about a good height for crouching down and putting wood or whatever in it and opening the door and seeing it, which will put the top of this, I think it's five and a half feet what the top of the frame will be. This is not where the frame's going. I just got it set up, getting ready to weld this, this joint here at the top. So just filling y'all in on how I'm figuring this out. And then that way everything is all square too, as I'm marking it. I'm not worried about trying to have the barrels lined up just right. So anyways, I'm gonna weld this frame up. I'll show y'all when the frame's all welded up and uh, we'll have the barrel sitting in here. All right, so we got our frame made up here. It's all, I decided to just weld it to the barrel. <clears throat> Instead of making more framing to go in between here, this is all leftover scrap. Uh, I didn't see any need use any more than I have to. This isn't that structural, but it's good and stout. Um, same thing on the back. Lee is welding a collar onto the upper drum. We set it up here and marked it. Um, that way it'll just slide over this and then we'll tighten up that lower bolt. If I ever need to remove the top drum for some reason or do something different, um, all I have to do is cut through the tacks where we tack it all on here and pull it off. Um, I've cut the plate there that goes in that barrel to split it in half except for about four inches at the front. So the smoke will come up and have to go to the front and then come back to the back. So it'll heat that whole barrel and the heat exchanger up more. Um, once he gets done with that and welds that in, then we can clean the lid up wherever it went and weld that barrel up. Then it can get put on here. All right, forgive the loud noise. We're getting some storms here, but this is what I was wanting to show y'all how I was dividing the top. As you can see, I got, I think this is four inches is what I left here uh, for the smoke to come up, come around and then go out my, my uh, stove pipe that'll be right there in the back. So this will make the smoke stay in here longer and heat all this heat exchanger stuff up. Like I said, it's just tacked twice on each side and three in the back. And uh, I put the ring back around it to make sure the drum stayed around. So when I put the top on here in a second, it'll be uh, it'll be round still and seal upright. So I'm gonna get busy cleaning these edges up and uh, weld the top on. 
and then we can permanently put it on here. Well, there we have it, all mounted, welded up on the frame here. Um, so now I'm gonna start figuring out, laying out my heat exchanger. I just ran out of wire. I got more wire coming out. Um, so anyways, drilling the holes for the heat exchangers, welding them up, uh, cutting the hole for the stove pipe to come out the back, welding that up in there. And then I decided to cut these plates right here on the side. And I'm probably not gonna weld all the way down. I'm probably gonna just do three strips of weld uh, on these two side pieces and I got a piece for the back. I figured that'd just protect the barrel that much more from coals or whatever. And then we'll be ready to uh, run the pipe. And I gotta cut a hole in the wall and, and build the wall thimble, like I said, and we'll be good to go. All right, so I went on and cut the hole for the stove pipe because we know we can't do any of the heat exchanger stuff there. We see our welds here, so I just gave me an inch line straight across the middle. Yes, I did have to re-weld that because uh, I cut it, it wasn't running horizontal the first time. So I had to cut some welds and weld it back in straight. Anyways, that's cut. So we know we can't put any heat exchangers in that point. So I had the other lid I mentioned. So I took it and I cut the bottom part flush so that I could set it right up against this barrel. So then I went on and laid all my pilot holes out, spaced everything out even, drilled the pilot holes in this. So now I can put this up there, clamp it, drill all my pilots front and rear, and then everything should be running horizontal front to back and line up. And then we can start cutting our heat exchanger pieces. So I'm gonna clamp this up and drill all these uh, holes. All right, we got all of our holes marked from our pattern. Now we're gonna drill them out with our hole saw here. Start sliding some pipe through here. So that's basically what we're going for right here. That gives me plenty of room to lay a bead of weld around these and they'll all be going through the inside of the barrel, just like that. So I'm gonna cut all these to length, get them all ready, prep all of these and get ready to weld those. And I'll weld the stove pipe last and then we'll have this thing sealed up. All right, we're all welded up. And let me tell you, it is a challenge welding to this stuff, especially this front top. It's a little bit thinner than the rest of the barrel. Uh, just two different thicknesses. That's the first one I did. I had a little bit of trouble getting it dialed in. And then uh, I looked from the back at all these, made sure I didn't see any daylight coming through my welds. There's a couple of spots I had to touch up uh, the back. I just tried to do, make sure they all look sealed up. So now this is our stove pipe, the five inch diesel exhaust we're gonna use. Uh, that's a 45, <clears throat> that is a, uh, I don't remember what that's from, but anyways, that's a 45. That way it can sit caddy corner in that corner back there and come out the wall over there. So I'm gonna weld that up. I'm gonna weld up those pieces I showed y'all down there for the firebox, and then uh, we can do a test fire in this thing. Guys, we are done. We picked the shop up. This is a little bit longer project than I thought. I don't remember what the, exactly the last clip was I showed you. I think it was when I was getting ready to weld the 45 on the back here. So that's all. Welded up nice. Um, these are already fired up. This is about half of the amount of pipe. Well, I'd say maybe a third of the amount of pipe we're gonna be using to get it out. Um, we're gonna burn it right here. Uh, let it burn some of this paint off and then I'm kind of anxious to shut the door, even with this door open, see what kind of heat it puts up. So uh, Lee's gonna light it up. We'll catch up with y'all and we get it hot. So we got a pretty good hot fire in it. We burn all the paint off the bottom one. I say burn all the paint, we charred all the paint at least. And if you can tell, we charred all the paint below where our plate is. And the top, I mean, it got hot. I could never keep my hand on it. It's still pretty warm now. And the fire's been dying down for a while. So, uh, and you can see how hot all that got. <clears throat> There's a better line. So I guess I, I'm gonna have to, uh, use the sand and disc from here up and take all that paint off just like I did on the ends. Before I do my coat of heat paint, which I'm gonna do these anyways, because these, these didn't get hot, they're just warm. But uh, yeah, next time y'all see it, it will have a nice coat of heat paint. We had a box fan just blowing behind it here and I was getting 120 degrees and that's when the, the box fan really wasn't blowing through these holes and moving air that, as good as it should. And that really wasn't when it as hot as it was either. So. Uh, Anyways, the air coming out of there at 120 degrees, I'm pretty happy with that. 
All right, guys, we are back on the stove build today. Got a nice coat of paint on it. I just got to touch up the bottom of the legs. I didn't want to get paint on my floor. I'm gonna slide a piece of cardboard underneath them or something. We did our test burning the other night, like we mentioned, which all went great. Um, we ended up drilling these holes. I don't know if I said that the other night after we did the burn, but that's what it took for it to draw really good with uh, to make the fire just roar. So what I'm gonna do is put some round tubes here with a little flap of metal you can open and shut for adjusting how much is drawn. Um, anyways, that can be an afterthought. Working on the thimble here. Um, this is a nine inch diameter circle here. This is a leftover catalytic converter off of a, I think a 6.0. Um, anyways, nine inches in diameter. I took all the guts out of it there. So we're gonna cut this circle out. <coughs> this will get mounted in the middle once I determine my depth for how far I need to go through my stud wall, my wall girt, and my metal on the outside. I'll tack it up, take it back down, fully weld this to this piece down here at the bottom. And then my stove pipe here, my five inch diesel exhaust, will go, it's a tight fit, I'll do it one hand, will go right through here. That gives me two inches of airspace between the pipe carrying the heat, the outside of this converter. And then I will also have, what is that? Three and a quarter air space between that and my studs. And I will block across the bottom also for this to get mounted to. The other reasoning behind doing this is this will be stout enough mounted to the studs to support my pipe on the outside of the building other than having a support to keep the pipe from trying to tump over, of course. Um, so I don't have that all fixed that way. And uh, I'll just cut a round circle in my metal on the outside of the building, the nine inch diameter of this, and I will just caulk it with some uh, high temp silicone or high temp RTV probably around the edge of this to seal it up. And then I won't have to worry about it getting too hot. And I don't know if I mentioned or not, this will get fully welded up here too. So uh, that's my version of my own wall thimble here, which will be heavy duty. And this will be so much metal to be a heat soak almost to me to not uh, get too hot. It would take a lot of heat to heat all of this stuff up so much. Um, so now I'm going to work on cutting this out, uh, figure out where it's going to go on the wall, and then I'm going to get my depth. I'm going to try to keep, try to go, I guess, 12 inches off of the wall. So I'm going to try to keep my, my closest points, uh, not get any closer than that. And I'll end up putting either metal or cement board or something against the wall to uh, shield the heat off of my wood studs there. So I'm going to get busy with this, and I'll catch up with y'all when we're doing that stuff over there. There's our wall thimble. Uh, I ran out of gas on the welder, so the welds went from looking normal to getting all splattery, but uh, went and got some more gas. But I got this done. Anyways, this is all screwed up, and uh, I got the hole cut on the outside, and that is caulked up. It's dark outside right now, so I can't go show you all that, but I caulked it up with some RTV. Uh, it's good for 500 plus degrees, which I'm sure we're not going to get that hot on the stove pipe here. So now I'm going to work on getting my stove kind of put in the right direction and see what I got to do for cut pipe, cutting pipe and cutting this to whatever length. Anyways, get that worked out and then stick some pipe up on the outside. Uh, for what I have left, I may have to go buy me one more stick of five inch, but we'll see and uh, get us fire going. What do you think? All right, we're all plumbed up to the wall. I just shot a coat of paint on this pipe's here. Um, I brain farted right here. I don't know how my height got off from what I had measured earlier, but somehow I measured this. I, I mounted this two and a half inches higher than I should have. So that was my fix. Uh, I cut a piece and spliced it in there to give me the angle I needed to get up there. Um, that's drying. I made a quick chimney top over here that Julie's painting. Um, let me show them real quick, babe. So that'll be our, our chimney top out there. So she's gonna throw a coat of paint on that and uh, we're gonna stick it up on the pipe on the outside and build us a fire in here. All right, we are all in. We got us a fire going. <clears throat> we're about 120 degrees in this center tube here. I got to build an enclosure back here to uh, force the air through here better. But uh, it's been going for about an hour. 
and there's zero heat. Of course, as soon as I got the fire going, I put both these fans on here. I wanted to see how the wall felt without any covering on it right now, which I'm gonna put something on here to protect it, but for the meantime, our uh, thimble's doing great. This is cool, like ice cold. This is just, I don't know, room temperature here. And of course the stove pipe, it's pretty hot, it's warm. I can keep my hand on it. All right guys, hope you enjoyed the video on building a double barrel stove. Uh, this was everything I built this out of was here with the exception of one stick of exhaust tubing that I had to go buy. Uh, I bought a 15 disc pack of uh, cutting discs for my angle grinder that was 15 bucks. I went through one two pound spool of welding wire on my welder, which was 12 bucks my price. Uh, three cans of paint. I think they were about six bucks a piece. So $18 worth of paint. I think that's it. Everything else I had here. So that's whatever that adds up to be. It's under a hundred dollars for sure. And I built the stove with the heat exchanger and everything back here. And I'm tickled to death with it. And it looks great. Doesn't look cheesy. I don't think. So, uh, gather up some materials, make you a double barrel stove. You don't have to do the shorter stove like this. I opted to do that so I didn't lose any more of my floor space down here in the shop. Um, so I went that route. Uh, five inch diesel exhaust worked great out there. Um, had that plate steel. So hopefully we can be warming this shop up and I'm really gonna enjoy having it. And the next time we do a video on this stove, it'll be setting up a waste oil burner inside of it also. So uh, anyways, hope y'all enjoyed it. Get out there, build your stove. This Automatic Garage signing out. If you're into power stroke, diesel content, forward stuff, go check out our, the rest of our channel, our other videos that we have. We'd appreciate it. Uh, appreciate all you subscribers and, and keeping the channel going. It has grown so much. We just crossed 4,000 subscribers right here at uh, Thanksgiving. So we really appreciate that. So uh, it's Automatic Garage signing out. We'll holler at y'all later.